TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK right behind me. You see it. Warning screen just in case. You know what I'm saying? Twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream. Usernames at the bottom of the screen. And Patreon. Premier League highlights UK TV shows and movies, man. All the good stuff you wish I could watch on here, it's over there. Trust me. Got like, I don't I, I want to count one day, like 1,500 videos over there. I don't know. It's a lot. Police interceptors. Police interceptors. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. I already screened this to make sure I haven't seen it. It's Saturday night in Nottingham. The glad rags are on, the lads are about, and the city looks lively. It's also happy hour for the criminal classes as interceptors kindly know full well. You know, you're opportunist thieves. Uh, if they know that people are out or visiting friends, they might be breaking into cars, breaking into houses. And obviously from those you get cars getting nicked as well with car key burglaries. It's not long before an ANPR camera picks up a stolen black Renault Kajar in the north of the city. Kai's got a hunch as to where it's heading and his instinct is spot on. That's, that's it. The driver's clocked the X5 and taken off like a bandit. Not Catch a go-go. It is failing to stop. The speed is 7-0. Red ATS, it is braking and it's signalling right, right, right. Mansfield Road towards Goose Fair Island. The driver might still be indicating, but his next move Why? is less highway code, more code red. Mate, he's gone wrong side. Yeah, that's right. The Renault with three on board is booting it the wrong way at nearly a ton. It's medium risk uh, at the moment. With little. When does it become high risk? He's on the opposite side of the road. Oncoming traffic, the pursuit is deemed safe to continue. Speed is 7 0. Very light traffic. On side again. If he plans to get the pursuit abandoned, he's picked the wrong night. Nothing on the road, mate. There is barely any traffic on the road. Uh, still continues uh, 8 0. What time did they say it was? And on roads this quiet, there's nowhere to hide from the interceptors. 860 outbound. Yeah, 860 outbound. We're just passing uh, Woodthorpe Drive to the officer. People do this in Florida, like on accident, on accident. Like literally be driving on the wrong side of the road. And I just can't fathom, like how did you, how? What made you think that that was the right side? This driver is an accident waiting to happen. He's taking major risks. It's clipped to curve. It's clipped to curve. With possibly damaged wheels, he loses control. Here we go and head straight into a lamppost. The passengers are off. Nah, don't tell me that police officer did not just try to hit bro with the car. Is that legal? You could do that. But Lee only has eyes for the driver. Driver's out. Back of the veil pull. With Thackeray's lamer into the park to the left-hand side. After one hell of a smash, the driver somehow vanished. They always go for the driver, 100%. So if you driving, and you bail out, just know they're on you. <laughs> they ain't on nobody else in that car unless there's multiple officers, but they most likely they on you. But Eagle Eyed Kai got a good look at him. Blackmail. Bro got it on a velvet green do rag. <laughs> of course. Black bandana, black clothing. Where's he gone? Bandana is crazy. Okay, he's gone to ground. 
If it's hide and seek he wants, then let the game begin. Coming, ready or not. Can someone join us in this park? I think he's gone to ground. I didn't come. He didn't come out at all. With other units now surrounding the park, it's just a matter of flushing him out. Where are the dogs at? Do you want to eat? We have my dog going. There it is. But they keep the dog on the lead because it's all kicking off at the top of the park. Stay there. Stay there. Kai's off like a shot, over the bridge and far away, to find Rob's grappled a guy to the ground. Yeah, that's him. It's their man. You're under arrest on suspicion of dangerous driving, theft a motor vehicle, and failed to stop the police. <clears throat> you don't have to say from me, I'm defense if you don't mention it. Look. Yeah. When questions sit close to running call. He looked pretty young. Bro, he's gonna be out tonight. <laughs> the driver's in cuffs. It's gonna bag him as well because he stinks of ale. But the passengers have slipped the net for now. One in a burgundy red t shirt. The other one was just in uh, black. That's the mandem. <laughs> Bro got on a hyper a green money green do rag out here. They'll comb the area for runaways. Still got the gloves on. While Bandana Man, who smells of booze, needs a breath test. So this is a breath box? Yeah. But suddenly the driver takes a turn for the worse. What's wrong with you? You all right? Having crashed into a lamppost, the guy now appears to have passed out. He struck exactly what I would have did. I'm passing out. Wake me up and uh and uh at the hospital. Give me a little time to sober up. You feel me? Struggling to breathe and needs urgent medical help. Put him on his back. It is cut off. What's wrong with you? Baking because you're cold. Are you having some sort of seizure or just shaking because you're cold? You can hear us, mate. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Got a pulse and he's breathing. <sighs> just sit up, get some fresh air. There we go. Fortunately for the lad, Kai... The bro fake faint. and Lee are advanced first aiders. I'm going to lie him down in the recovery position. If he can't breathe. If he can't Mate, breathe. Get a nasal tube, I'll put one in him. If yeah. he's starting to have breathing issues. Yeah. And a nasal, what'd that do? It go up your nose? Has he got any medi bracelets? No, can't say anything like that. I've checked him top to toe. He's got no other injuries at all. He's not bleeding from anywhere. He's got a strong... Strong pulse. Although his airway is gargling. They need to ensure he's getting sufficient airflow to his lungs. Oh, he actually needs... He got an issue. We're going to stick a tube in your nose to help you breathe. Just checking the airway. There's no obstructions and they're clear. While the nasal tube helps breathing, it's not built for comfort. Oh, there we go. Oh, what's oh, oh, no, you're, you're right. right. We'll just put Just making sure you that's can gonna, breathe. That's going to help you breathe, my friend. Take some deep breaths. Here we go. It looks like he's going to make it. Just to update you, uh, Aditane male's become unresponsive. Uh, we're administering first aid. We've cleared his airway with a nasal tube and he's now uh, on a... I'm going to be real with you. I don't think you should be going out doing debaucherous things if you got medical condition. I feel like this ain't normal. Yeah, you hit a little pole, but it would you ain't smack it that hard now. Oxygen. An ambulance arrives to take over medical duties. Otherwise, all these numbers are spot on. Right. If he faking it. Leaving he... the boys able to return to the crash site. Yeah, he did hit He's back. clipped a curb back there. Alright, he hit it pretty hard. I ain't going the whole car is folded down the middle. It looked like a paper plane. That's tough. Uh, some speeding. He's obviously done the front and the back wheel. So on on this near side, 
I think fortunately for him, he's hit the, uh, the traffic post and not the wall beyond it. With Kai and Lee's pursuit and medical know-how, it's been a job well done. And the Renault, albeit damaged, is heading home. I think it is reassuring for the public to know that, you know, we, we do care. Bro, that car is totaled. What do you mean headed home? <laughs> headed to a chop shop? Like, that's done. There has to be structural damage. Like, it's over with. Capture stolen cars. And we don't just get the cars, we actually get the drivers as well. Um, I don't times. want that. We might not be uh, youngsters in trainers, but, uh, but we still managed to get them. Bandana Man made a full recovery. He was later found... Sir... It's Durag Man. That is not a bandana. Bandana Man made a full recovery. He was later found guilty of aggravated vehicle taking, dangerous driving, no insurance, and driving without a full license. He was sentenced to 14 months behind bars. Dang, 14, huh? At least he avoided that uh, DUI charge. <laughs> it's tough. 14. Dealing with rowdy groups is par for the course for the interceptors. Hey, Lisa. Look like you're having a great time at work. Hey, I feel it. We got your bars, boys. Bars, S70. Put that on the map. But they're well aware that loudmouths often sound off to distract cops from something suspect. Just run some plates through, please, in the view to this vehicle. <laughs> when you're dealing with groups of people, quite often you will get one or more of the group will, will try and distract you by either running off or playing up or co just causing a nuisance to take your attention away from what is actually happening. It works. I had a friend that did that one time. He ran some interference and gave me enough time to do X, Y, and Z and it not get found. We got up out of there. <laughs> I was, hey, it's good, bro. It's good. He was, oh, okay. Instantly got quiet. Let them finish doing what they was doing, and we was gone. If you're outnumbered, it's very difficult because people are quite switched on. So you have got to be eyes about, really, Allegedly. when you're dealing with uh, with more than one person. Eyes about tonight is the knife crime team. Ken Tinley is double crewed with Jessica Ashford, who's on attachment. There. Who the hell is Jessica Ashford? Looking like Angelina Jolie. En route to a suspicious motor, spotted. Okay. Not Angelina, but Angela Jolly. She looked like Angela Jolly. In North Nottingham. My bad. Our plane spotter cars, that side of Nottingham now, and they're, uh, they're just observing a vehicle that's parked in a dead end cul de sac near to one of the, uh, the locations where we've had these recent tensions. So, uh, and they've just got some concerns about a particular car that's um, occupied, but something doesn't feel right about it. So, we're just going to assist them. I feel like she got a big head. Is it me? Hold on, let me see. I can't think of who she looked like, but she looked like a cartoon character. When interceptors send something's wrong, it usually is. See if I can catch him up, because I think Gav's going to want to go for the stop on the vehicle in a second. The suspect car is on the move, with Gav Hall on its tail. Yeah, we're going to be going right, 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 Hucknall Lane, general direction, Hucknall. I've got to stop him. I wonder if this Gav one gives hits chase. the blues and gives a blast of the twos. They're gonna stop. He is not stopping. Give it's him a looking moment. iffier by the minute. He's stalling us for time. I'd say the problem. He's trying to get a nice spot. From the concealing. Gav suspects they're trying to quickly hide something. We'll play it dumb till you get here. Ken and Jessica are soon on scene, along with other members of the knife crime team. Nice there are four car. people in the car, and things already smell dodgy. I see you got your spliff on the go. Just chuck it in there for me, and I'll sort it in there. I'll sort that out. Just jump out the car for me. Two of the lads have coughed up to carrying cannabis. 
got some weed. And if, if it's just cannabis, mate, I'm not, I've got to deal with it, but I'm not concerned about cannabis. While Ken deals with one of the passengers. That's why it should be legal. Because y'all already really don't care. Jessica has her hands full with another. So the vehicle smells of drugs, doesn't it? Yeah, so it smells, it's weird, it's weird. It's yeah. weird. There's weed in there. There's weed in there. Yeah, well that's fine. I'm telling you, what are you being like that for? It's annoying, man. I have explained this is the first annoying. time. This is the first time. It's annoying. I'm, listen, listen to me. It's annoying. It's a difficult period right now. My friend just died. We're going to go visit his mum. Like, just just allow it. Yeah, and I just understand that. But just you, allow you, it. The, come, no. If you want to come and get the weed. Yeah. Weed, You're going to be moving. searched, okay? You're going to yeah, be searched. Yeah, cool search, man. Right. His mum. Like, just... The bloke's increasingly agitated, and the knife crime team... He's definitely running interference. Team Sergeant Matt Daly steps in to lend support. Okay, you're going to yeah, be cool searched. search, man. Right. Uh, search me, i got weed on me. Search me! Search right. me! Look, stop stop me. being like that! Bro, you're done pissing me off, man. Search okay, me, bro. Look, you're you're gonna gonna search me, bro. Watch, yeah, nah, he overly guilty. He doing to a lot. He's doing a lot. Do your thing, do your thing, bro. Search me, bro. Yep, do not it? Search me, bro. Once coughed, Matt grants him his wish. So did you say you've got something on? I've got weed on me. Just search the It's in my pocket. Search me. Search me. It's right there, bro. Right there. Okay. Let's start with that. As the search continues, one of the lads suddenly kicks off with Dan Mottishaw. What? Why am I giving this up? You're cool for no reason, bro. I'm going to see my friend's mum. Get back! What the f*** you bro? I want to say like why did he push him but it's pretty clear <laughs> why would you approach that officer like that man I understand y'all going through it but y'all as men as young black men you got to learn how to regulate your emotions and this is not the proper way I'm gonna keep it a buck with you this ain't it this is how you go out in America, at least, this is how you go out and die by police officer. Like, don't do that. <laughs> Get back! What the f*** are you doing? Hey, what the f*** are you doing? You f***ing... What are you doing? No! With an angry man aggressively approaching, Dan had no option but to shove him away. And it's all kicking off. What are you doing that, you dickhead? What are you doing that? What are you doing that? Who's a dickhead? My man over there. My, 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 it's my brother. Yeah. He's what are you doing that? No. This is like, 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 oh my god. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? I was talking to this guy. That's weird. I'm so You've seen what your colleague no, done, though. You've seen what he done, though. Why didn't you push him? Mm-mm. Ah, I can't let y'all get a vibe by that. I can't let y'all do that to these officers like that. Like, I get it. I get the anger. A family member, a close person has passed away. But you, you came at that officer. You don't do that. Brother, you automatically go get put in handcuffs. You lucky you wasn't in America because you would have been face down on the concrete. I'm telling you, he probably, he, he might have, they might have, they might have hit you with a billy club in America. You're getting off nice right now. You didn't see nothing. Like, what's going on? I don't, I don't understand what's happening here. Yeah, let me back these up. If it's just a bit of weed, their behavior seems way over the top. This, this feels like a, a, an act. I think there's something else around here somewhere. I don't know if there's anything else, man. Some people just genuinely don't like police. And they could just, you know, can't, they can't emotionally regulate, wasn't taught as youngins, which most people aren't, most at-risk youths aren't. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... Mm. See, me, when the police come around, I don't even play them type of games, man. I just, I've learned to just do what they say. Unless it's a, egregiously out of their, like, unless it's like a, a big word, you feel me? I don't even know what to put after it. That's crazy. Unless it's like egregious, egregiously out of what they're supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they do be breaking the law, but I ain't gonna lie. That officer was standing there asking you a question, and you walk dead towards him very aggressively. I like it, like you wanted smoke with him. Like, what was he supposed to do? Ken's been on the force for over nine years. Experience tells him something else is at play here. 
but we've got people getting very agitated. And what concerns me is this is, might be some sort of ploy to stop us from finding something, to attract our attention from something else. Look at me, look at me, don't look at my car type scenario. So we just need to try and take our time, get the car searched thoroughly, and, uh, and I mean, it may well be, it's just a bit of cannabis, could, but... Could be. I don't know, it's a bit on edge at the minute. As suspected, there's a reason these guys kicked off, and it's... In their car. Let's just go like that. Ah. Oh. So there's been a quantity of cannabis found in the vehicle. Uh, there appears to be a burner phone, which has loaded up with deeper content. There's cannabis oh, nice concealed trap. in different compartments of the car, such as in a shoe box inside a shoe. They've also discovered scales and cash. Yeah, man, they're not the smartest criminals either. Yeah, I was trying to give y'all the benefit of the doubt when buddy, he said my mom did, my buddy's mom, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? I tried. But, you know, because I've run this same interference. I've, I've my, my friends run it, but I was trying. Using a fake death is just out of bounds for me, though. Despite the passengers' distraction tactics, the team has come up trumps. We're quite fortunate on the knife crime team that we get to operate in groups of sort of five, six, seven officers. More often than not, this car would have been pulled by probably a response cop on his own, or maybe if they're lucky, double crewed. And if you've got sort of four verbally agitated, aggressive males, you know, not, not threatening violence, but just bouncing around, you know, portraying that they could get aggressive. More often than not, I think sometimes it deters officers from doing a more thorough search. Matt suspects a bigger motive for their roadside. Still not much in there. Right, pantomime. If they haven't taken the time to hide these in the 300 metres they've yeah. driven, failing to stop, they had something more urgent to hide, didn't they? I suspect we'll find it probably class A in their pants. Yeah. Gotta take them to the nick for that, don't look. Strip search. The lads are off to the nick for a strip search. I knew it. <laughs> Get you inside and then we'll get you handcuffed. So, circumstances of arrest. Thank you. Sorry, this, uh, this individual is the driver of a motor vehicle. Uh... How many good looking officers do they got on duty right now? <laughs> I haven't seen. Even though Shorty with the blue eyes had a big forehead, like, she still looked nice. Stopped on Hucknall Lane. He was one of four occupants detained for a stop search under the Misuse of Drugs Act. While Ken and Jessica deal with the driver, their colleagues have searched the passengers and their suspicions seem to have been confirmed. Ah, ah they got y'all. You're cooked. Uh. Strip search has just took place downstairs and there's a load of class A. The two passengers who kicked off both had items concealed in their pants. One with suspected heroin and another was cautioned for an ounce of weed. Overcooked. So 21 and 23 and a half. I got to write these times down so I can blur it out. And if you don't know by now why we blurring stuff out, man, that sucks for you. It's unfortunate because I'm not going to keep repeating it. The investigation into the suspected Class A's continues. It's Soapy Sunday. <laughs> okay, Lisa. <laughs> What's next? This is like a little, what, what we respect Most interceptors are petrol heads who take pride in their wheels. Oh, well, my aunt's killing me. I bet it is, you don't do no work. So this is crazy, for, this, for me to see this out of you is wild. I ain't even gonna lie, Lisa. They've one, and like, second of all, if I was an officer, Ooh, it feel weird even saying that. Hypothetically speaking, which will never happen, if I was an officer, ain't no way I'm washing my own car. It, I leave working, but I better come back and it's washed. It gotta be a night crew washing cars or something. Some lovely looking motors in the fleet. And if not, I don't care. Let it be dirty. <laughs> but none sound quite as good as the Skoda VRS. 
242 horses, 0 to 60 in just over six seconds. Slow as hell. Top end of 155. It's not bad, actually. Wheels of choice for Gen House and Police Dog Quantum. Ooh, that top speed, not bad. But 0 to 60 in six seconds? I mean, that is a bigger car, but... <laughs> who are racing to rendezvous with a pair of Mark V Series Beamers. Hold on, I gotta clean my desk off. It's bothering me. A two-two run with the units now. They're after a Merc that's been hired and not returned. It's a blue that's one of my biggest fears like I want to start like a I want to do like a y'all have like what's that app called where you can like rent a car off regular people I forgot what it's called here but I'm pretty sure y'all might have a version of it there I want to do that but like I don't want nobody to play with me like that you know what I'm saying because I'm going to take it personal you know so I just you know Basically, I'd reports of a Mercedes that's been uh, taken out by fraudulent means. Uh, a brand new one that's heading north. The plan is to stop the Merc using tactical pursuit and containment. Boxing it in with multiple cars. I've got the T Pack team. Can we watch cops? Y'all think we could watch cops on here, like the American show Cops? I would love to watch it. I should try tonight. Maybe I'll try. I just want to compare and contrast. There are two cars. We've got another car somewhere else than us. And then the other dog handler as well. Jen's a T-Pack train driver herself, but she's here to provide backup in... Because I'm pretty sure ain't none of this T-Pack, ain't none of nothing. It's, none, it's not going to be the same type of policing. Case the driver bails out. And we'll be at the back as a flight risk, so uh, if they're going to run off. Late two, we're to northbound. Past the off-slip, lane's end. That's us, Yeah. The Merc is I hope I wasn't muted. I said, if I was, I'll repeat. I said, you think we could do cops? Like the American show cops. I'm, I want to try. And if we can't, we can't. Whatever. Uh, but I want to try. I think it'll be cool to compare and contrast on the different styles of policing. Because I'm pretty sure none of this T-Pack maneuver and all of this calling in and getting clearance is going on. It's not happening. Is up ahead on the A1, so three performance cars. I feel like UK cops know the law better than uh, American cops. Let's roll out with a roar. I think Mark might be behind us. The suspected stolen Merc is a mile ahead with an unmarked unit on its tail. The team makes short work of that mile. And Jen has a ringside seat for the boxing. One car gets in front, one at the side, one at the rear. Wait, wait. All the guy needs to do is slow down, but he panics, slams on the anchors in the middle of lane two, giving the back unit no choice but to rear end the Merc. Or the back unit could have went through some more T-Pack maneuver training and actually stopped faster. But it's a successful stop. <laughs> Why the dog ain't in the... Quantum is chomping at the bit. But the driver of the Merc, allegedly hired through fraudulent means, is already in cuffs. Oh, so he ain't steal the car. He got it, like, he finessed it. Finesse, finesse paperwork. So he could have stole it and got away and never came back. Too bad it's a GPS on there. You got a drive license in there. Huh? 
driver's license or bank card or anything. There's no full license in his fetching man bag, nor indeed on the DVLA database, because he hasn't passed his test. Which might explain why he stomped on the brakes and caused an accident. Lewis, can you drive this car? I want to clear the carriageway so we can search it. We'll just clear the carriageway then, take him in his car to the lay by. Yeah. And we'll get some searches out. Toby, stick him in here. Yep. Stand up for me. Oh, okay, to this police car. No, all of this happened? Or what? We've got it stopped, we've got him out. No injuries to him, no injuries to us. Bit of damage to the police car, but that can go in the garage, can't it? Despite being almost new, the hire car is in a right state. Ooh, that was terrible. Why did this even happen? Fag burns in it now. It's a bit, bit of a nail inside. It won't be happy, would you? Cops suspect it's being used as a pool car, a motor shared between criminals. This is just being handed around, I think. I'm not even convinced he's the original hire. Pool cars are normally old bangers, while this 40 grand Merc has been abused to the point where it looks like one. Yeah, it's a bit of a sh Well, they didn't trap that Mercedes out. They got that mug looking terrible. Dad. For car loving coppers, this is criminal. That's a 69 plate convertible Mercedes. They literally just don't care, do they? Because that's obviously going to cost the rental company a lot of money. It won't be cheap to get the 5 Series fixed either. Is there a lot of damage or? Yeah. Oh, is there? Yeah, a lot of money to fix. Mm. New grill, new bumper. No, no, not new bumper, I'm tweaking. New light if it's cracked. You could probably straighten this hood back and realign it. You just got to see if it's any damage to the, um, in, what is it called? The impact rails or whatever it's called behind the, the this stuff. The man who slammed on his brakes on the A1 was not connected with the fraudulent hire of the Merc and no further action was taken regarding theft. He was, however, convicted of driving without a full license and driving without insurance. It's not bad. He got eight points plus fines and charges totaling £154. Still to come. Nope, let's fast forward through there. All right, there's nothing there. It was still to come. We don't watch those anyway. Hopefully there's no, there is. All right. Uh, I guess I'll just write it down. Police officers! Please stay where you are! Please. Nice. <laughs> Cannabis farms in the region are on the rise. These plants are probably six foot tall. With knots interceptors seizing Still greenery is, for guys. domestic setups. Uh, it was approximately, I believe, it's about 18 plants in here. Right through to industrial operations. It's uh, overwhelming the smell. Damn. You wouldn't want to be working in here for too long. And well, a favourite setup for organised cannabis dealers is in rented accommodation. For a full-scale operation, it needs a lot of space. And what criminals, what they don't want to do, is to have a cannabis farm in their own home. So a tactic they'll regularly employ is... YouTube, if you are seeing this, it is all blurred out. Please, now stop doing this to me. They will rent a property. Um, sometimes they'll do it under a pseudonym so they, they, can, they can't be traced back to them. Um, they'll go under the gun. Bro, just say alias. All right, we know you know big words. <laughs> just say alias eyes of it being a genuine rental that there's going to be a family home but what they'll actually do is turn the whole property into a, uh, a cannabis factory every square inch that they can use to grow cannabis they will use and because it's not their property they're not bothered about the amount of damage that's caused Acting on a tip-off from a member of the public, officers Lee Frith and Lewis Marshall are racing to a suspected cannabis farm on a housing estate in Aspley. So there's a suspected cannabis grow being dismantled. Uh, there's a van been reversed up to the door um, and it smells like cannabis. 
So someone's reported it. So there's numerous cars going there to see if we can intercept the van. They hope to catch the farmer with his crop, which calls for a swift entrance. The boys have the big red key and need to get there sharpish. Left, and then the premises is there on the left. It's like the car park at Bridewell Nick. There are lots of police officers. The suspected farmer's van is still outside. And it looks like they've been expecting unwanted visitors. It's a camera there pointing at everyone. The windows are covered up and there's no... So they see it coming. They see the downfall of this grow coming. ...answer from inside. However, the interceptors believe someone's home. It looks like there's a light on in there. We, we've got Enforcer around Hulu and, and Ripsaw and everything. So we're just getting out now. Ooh. What the hell is this? Lee's an operational firearms commander, but it's his method of entry skills that are needed tonight. This back door's useless, so you better with just a red key. What is it? What is it? Yeah, it's just rubbish. Want to go down? Eh? Hey? Uh, happy to go down. Lewis is itching to take the door down, but first they need the green light from control. So at the moment, we're all waiting around with a containment on, waiting to see if we've got the power of entry. And if we've got that power of entry, we're just going to bust the door in. 251, so if you believe there's cannabis going there based on information. Right, cool. That's what I just said. Bosh the door in, permission is granted. One door down. That's a crap back door. One to go. If you want to try and put that panel in. Yeah, quite a nice Yeah, yeah, it will. Please! There's two blokes inside the property. <laughs> Round the front, round the front. Please! Stay where you are! Police officers, make yourself known! The occupants try to scarper through the windows. Now, y'all surrounded, buddy. Where the, where's the camera feed going to? How do y'all not know y'all surrounded? Yeah, we've got the one round the back. But with the coppers in these numbers, chances of escape are zero. Got both? Yeah, there's one round the back, one on the front, isn't there? Two men in cuffs. What is this? It's not county lines. This is different. This is a whole grow. Both men are nicked, and it's soon clear why they jumped out of the window. Bingo. Uh, you're done. The whole of this rented house has been converted into a cannabis factory. It's a bad day for someone. 50, 60 plants in here. Yeah, they're cooked. Same in the other rooms. So, quite a good job. And it's burning me head. <laughs> <laughs> There's weed growing in every single nook and cranny. God, this is the staircase coming up, which is all covered by the tarpaulins, but even they've even put a shelf above the top where they've got a little nursery growing. Total use of space. There's no way the landlord... No space whatsoever was left untouched will know about this. So this is someone that's just renting the property and these people have just destroyed his house. It looks like the interceptors have taken out a seriously organised operation. So they've converted the front room into another room. Bro. Going through into the kitchen. They've got pipes going in to create the water and then this is the ventilation to try and get air circulating through the house. Just destroyed someone's house. It's a sophisticated setup producing an estimated six-figure sum of cannabis. It'll be gangs, and these people that we've caught will probably be paid not very much money at all to live here, and just literally their whole life is just looking after these cannabis farms. It's not even Madness. a bad look. They've literally squashed it in, a couple of pieces of wood, a mattress, living in there, making as much room as possible for the cannabis. They've very kindly labelled all the rooms for us, though. And there's a room reserved for the green-fingered suspects, with bars in it. Are they going to jail? Three men were found guilty of producing cannabis, 
and sent down for nine months, eight months and five months respectively. At That's least they'll bad. have beds there. All things accounted for, six-figure grow house, that ain't bad that amount of time. Drug-free is the way to be. Just imagine when they make drugs, I mean, Class B's, Class B cannabis legal in the UK. How many jobs people will have? How many business will have been, how many businesses will be started? It's estimated there are one million uninsured drivers on UK roads. So when did you make the insurance out? I want to make tonight, to convince somebody to make the insurance tonight. So you haven't made insurance yet? No, yet. And folks not doing the right thing is wronging everyone else on the road. I'm not doing nothing wrong, sir. Well, you are, you've got insurance. The more people have got their insurance, the more yours, mine, Everybody's premium goes up. I mean, the reasons for it is probably vast. Uh, some people generally probably <coughs> just can't afford it. They'll be knocking around some old banger of a motor and just they've bought a car for a few hundred quid and it's going to cost them four times that to insure it. Might be a reason they can't get insurance because like it's they might have 12 points on their license. They might be banned, which means they're not going to get insured. Or if they do get an insurance quote, they'll be they'll be quoted thousands to insure a car that's worth a few hundred quid. So they're not going to bother, are they? And then they'll just wing it and hopefully they won't get caught. Hoping they will get caught tonight are interceptors Carl and at the wheel Greg. They've clocked a couple of young Who lads in a Vauxhall people? Vectra. Uh, Vauxhall Vectra insured for Richard Wright at Newcastle, Staffordshire. I mean, I guess it's cool, man. We get to see new people, but dang. I thought I'd have seen almost every episode. I know I'm very far from seeing every episode, but... Well, Richard Wright's born 57, so that is him. The main policy holder is a man approaching his 70s. But this driver looks like a spring chicken. Time to ruffle some feathers. Carl takes the lead. Is it your car? Yes, yeah, it's my car. Who's it insured to? Me. And? And uh, I've got a picture with you. Who else is it insured to? I've got a producer. Because I'm a, I'm a, uh, it's me, I'm a third driver, and then there's a second driver. The man claims to be a named driver on someone else's insurance. So they need to find out who holds the main policy. Who's the second driver? My cousin. Who's that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to kill you because his name is uh, Adam. Yeah. But he got a second name. We, we so how do you not know his on. name? His Polish name is Adam. That's what we well, call what's him. his real name then, like, on the insurance policy? Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, how, how, do you, how do you not know if it's your cousin? It is my cousin. All right. Jump out. It's my cousin. The driver... Sometimes you just don't know. ...never doesn't seem to know his cousin from Adam. <laughs> Good one. Hello. Hello, hello. How old's Adam? I'm 25, 26. 25, 26, right. The person on this insurance policy is not 23 or 24. I don't know, he's like in his 20s, like 25, 26. Right. 70, buddy. You're off of, uh, uh, you're off 50 years. It's not true, though, is it? It is true. I'm not gonna... It's not. Time. He looked drunk. For some fishing. Are you known to the police at all? Yeah, I've been uh, You've been arrested? Yeah. What for? Because I was driving with no insurance. Ah. The bloke has previous for no insurance, and Carl thinks he's caught him hook, line, and sinker. You ain't learned your lesson? He's insured it to somebody else to make it cheaper, and oh, that's yeah. what he's done. That's what you've done, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It's a common scam. Take out a policy under a random name to keep down your premium. But Carl's wriggling fish insists cousin Adam is legit. And what's his name? Adam. What's his surname? Right. Mate, you're lying. Don't keep lying because you'll really start to annoy me. Where does your Where does your cousin live? Uh, not in London. Pardon? Nottingham. Hmm. No, he doesn't. 
Yeah, he lives like he's from nothing, but he lives like in Leeds. <laughs> no, we just uh, keep trying. No, we just uh, keep trying. He fishing. Greg's seen it all before. You're not the first person today. Never mind this week. Never mind or in all the years I've been doing this, who have tried to pull this one on the insurance. We know what you're doing. Everybody does it, and they do it all the time. You don't know this person who is named on the insurance. You, you're not even saying his name right. He is 70 years old. 70. 70. Yeah. No. And he doesn't live in any of the places that you've said. No so way you can confuse. this insurance was taken out for a week. No, one you, no way you can confuse 70 with whatever, uh, 25, buddy. Buddy would have to have some of the greatest genes to be being mistaken for 25. Kigo, you you've done it under a false address and you've put this other person down who doesn't exist and you're 70 years old and you've done it to get your insurance premiums lower. You, everyone's doing it all the time, we're not stupid. It's showing you are insured on the car but only by way of fraud because you don't even know this other person who's the policy holder. This ruse is going to cost the lad a lot more than he saved. There's no point in lying about it because you're just going to be worse off and now you, we're going to seize your car. You're going to get six points on your license. I, I wouldn't even have did all that. If I'm doing that and they pulled me over, hey, here's the policy, I'm on there. Period. I'm on there. I'm on there. Oh, who's the original? I'm on there. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and you're going to have to pay to get the car back. So you're taking my yeah, and you you know you just don't want to tell us, and you're lying about it, and that's what's making me even more annoyed. So if you what? just be honest, then we can sort. If you just be honest, we're still taking your car and giving you the same tickets that if you lie and we figure it out, nothing's gonna change. Sort it out. I am honest. You're not. Good cops not working. Time for bad cop. I tell you what, then I think what we'll do, right, is because you're lying to us, what we'll do is we'll arrest you. I'm going to take you down to the police station. Should we play it that way? No, no. Or do you want to be, George, you want to be honest with us about your insurance? No. What? I am honest. So what have you done about your insurance then? So I am honest. I haven't done this decision with my cousin to insurance for me. Right. Right, you're under, no, we're going to arrest you and take you down the station. We've had enough of you. Greg's feeling generous and gives him one last chance. Adam Wright doesn't exist, does he? Adam Wright? Yeah. You haven't got a cousin called Adam Wright, have you? No. So you've been lying to us? Would you Adam and Eve it? So you don't know Richard Wright, who's 70 years old, who lives in Stoke-on-Trent? He doesn't... No. So what's going to happen here? Almost had it. Richard Wright, Stoke-on-Trent. My uncle, not cousin. Yes. You're gonna, we're going to take the car off you and we'll, uh, we're, you're going to be reported to court for driving with no insurance. Which means it's an alternative means of transport for the lad and his passenger. You are walking, yeah. It's, walking? it's cold, isn't it? What? Cold. We are lifting your <laughs> There's no room. Oh, there's a plenty of... There isn't, there's no room. I can't fit in the boot. <laughs> you can't. Well, well uh, no, not in the boot. There's a lot of stuff in there. Up on the car, it's another uninsured driver off the roads, with the boys eventually squeezing out the truth. It kind of looked like a Chevy. It kind of looked like a uh, Malibu. Chevy we get Malibu. lied to. I know, yeah, yeah, I know what a Chevy Malibu is. Constantly, and we can uh, could normally tell when someone's lying to us, which was the case here. Uh, he thought he was going to get away with it, but um, fortunate for him, we knew he was lying to us, and we got to the bottom of it in the end. Doesn't sound very fortunate for him, officer. The bloke was found guilty of driving without insurance and fined £660. No police time. I think this is the last episode, I mean the last segment of this episode. Only five minutes long. It's been a quiet day for interceptors Jim and Danielle, but they're hoping for a chance. I remember Danny. I like how Danny does her hair. Age of pace. The big job's not happened yet. 
Yes, like she do got nice eyes. I remember Danny. Just around the corner. Go and find some car chasers is what I'm after. A job comes in. Could this be the epic pursuit Jim's pining for? Like the it's color the, of the uh, Leon that's done the 22 quid's worth of gas theft. Not exactly the heist of the century. Y'all trying to get somebody for 20... Oh, I forgot. Y'all do the pumps different out there. You pump your gas, then pay. Gregory Boulevard, eastbound. Mm-hmm. I'm pulling up no plates, mask on. But the suspect vehicle is on the move. We are not far away. They pick up the better? Seat with another unit already behind. To the Sierra Kilo Mobile, we're going to be directly behind you now. Are you T-Pack? Yeah, two and H. We'll wait for the other T-Pack resources to join us. Jim once wrestled and disarmed a bloke with a gun. But this oh, is his first 20 quid gas robbery. I remember him too. Left, he left, got left a onto Broxtow Street. Normal road speeds. The gas man's clocked the cops. He is well aware of it. Yeah, received. One occupant. It's a one adult male, and we are right, right onto Woodville Road. But rather than hit the gas, he's pootling round the block with a convoy of cops on his tail. I, I don't think he's going to go. The vehicle's only travelling at one zero, maybe looking for an opportunity to come to a natural. Are y'all going to stop? Sorry, Jim, hit but the... it's more of a driving... Did y'all hit the lights or...? ...Miss Daisy affair. And he is left, left, left. And we're with the T-Pack mobiles. We can take it from him if you want from the secure kilo. And we're left, left Melrose Street, and it's three T-Pack mobiles with the subject vehicle now. With hit the lights. Trio of highly trained drivers in his rear view, the gas man makes the right choice. Looks like he's going to come to a natural to the near side team if you want to strike here, just wrap round it. To an H, thinking he's stopped. Yeah, doing all that T back maneuver calling and they, he ain't even on that. No vehicle damage, no contact. They're taking no chances, he's going straight into cuffs. Is that One Lisa? Driver. They're taking no chances. He's going straight into cuffs. Where the hell did Lisa come from? What a pleasant surprise. I had no idea you was about to pop up. One driver out and detained. No other occupants in the vehicle. Is it your car? Yes. Your car. How long have you been in it? You been in it, been in it? Have you been driving it around today? Today? Uh, one hour. An hour or so. We've had a report. This vehicle has been seen potentially committing a theft. Stolen some items from a, uh, like a gas shop in Nottingham about an hour ago. And the vehicle that we suspect is involved is this vehicle here. And that's your vehicle, you were driving it, it belongs to you. So that's why we stopped you. Uh-huh. Okay? All right. The Bro, there's 19 officers here for $22 of gasoline. <laughs> They literally got nothing better to do at this point in the day. Nothing. And English isn't brilliant, but he's got questions to answer. Oh, she got that firearm on her, don't she? They all do, huh? Where have you been today? Where did you go? Flow gas. You've been to flow gas? Yes. Uh, wh why? I'm thankful for the gas. To so get some gas? Uh, did you pay? The pennies finally dropped. But not, it seems, in the shops till. I forgot. You yes. forgot to I'm pay. Here we go. Oh dear. Ah, that's why. You forgot. Is that? I'm half cart and everything. Is that some kind mm. of admission? But Is I'm... yes. You might have forgot, forgot to, to pay, pay for your gas. gas. Yeah. Did oh. you forget that? I feel like that's like a acceptable reason. Like, like I was in a rush. I forgot. My bad. Uh, hold on. Let me go back and pay. As long as I got the money to pay, I should be able to... Oh. Easily done. Easily done, mate. Yes. Wow. Not Very good, is easily. it? Danielle isn't entirely convinced. Why did, when police cars behind you, why did you then... 
Oh, go a very strange route. I think about the... Oh. I feel like she lift weights. <laughs> oh, God, she's strong as hell. Look at her arms. She swole. She remind me of like she she do CrossFit or something. Got to. Salute, Danny. Lisa and Danny. Number one and number two. One A, one B. I think somebody knew and yeah. thought they might get away with it. It is my fault. Yeah. He claims he was looking for a parking space to visit the hairdresser, and Jim's giving him the benefit of the doubt. What we'll do, mate, is we will speak to the company that are 20 quid down for their gas. Yes. And hopefully what we'll do is we'll make an arrangement for you to go and pay them for that money. I don't think there's any necessity here to arrest you or take you to a police station. It's really low value, isn't it? Mr Forgetful hasn't forgotten about his barber's appointment, though. I'm just quickly changing. Change my appointment and uh, hire a dresser, and I'm going to pay for the. I think if you, yeah, I think, I, I think if you go get your hair cut and then do it, that's fine, as long as it's done today. Are you sure? Yes, as long as you go do it and don't do it again. Yes, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. First time I do that. This is, this is an insane case. <laughs> mm. And with five firearms officers in attendance, it'll... That's what I'm saying, five firearm officers for $20 worth of gas. If y'all don't go stop some real crime... Probably be the last time. Sorry. Mm. Right. I think about the high record. <laughs> Which one open? Jim cuts to the point. We know who you are, we know where you live, we know what car you drive. Make sure you pay that money back or else we'll come and knock on your door. And it might become a little bit more where you live, we know what car you drive. Make sure you pay that money back or else we'll come and knock on your door and it might become a little bit more serious for you. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But thanks for being cooperative about it. Fair enough. Did he the pay? The forgetful gas man was true to his word and paid up later that day. No further action was taken. Fair enough. Not Nottinghamshire's most wanted after all, I'm afraid. But there you go. Still, it's a job. Oh, he was looking for a real park for his hair appointment. Okay. Done and tip and uh, even mad at him. Happy days, really. Hey, that haircut matter. It changed your whole demeanor, don't it? <laughs> Bro, it's funny to get arrested about it. That's tough. I'm gone.